In this lesson, we are going to be solving two-step equations using integer operations. Before we get started, let's talk about a few things that are really important for us to remember. So, there's a little bit of terminology that we want to make sure we understand. The first thing we're going to talk about is our variable. So, our variable is represented by a C on our equation in the left and an X in our equation on the right. A variable is a quantity represented by a letter. The coefficient is the number being multiplied by the variable. So, in our example on the left, we can see that negative 5 represents our coefficient because it's being multiplied by C, and on the right, we'll see that 3 represents the coefficient because it's being multiplied by X. And then the last thing we want to remember is the constant. The constant is a fixed term, which means that it's a number without a variable. So in this example, we can see that this negative 30 represents our constant and the 23 represents our constant. We also, the negative 5 on the right side of the equation and the negative 35 are also constant values. And so when we go to solve equations and isolate the variable, we are going to want to gather all of the constants together. So let's look at the next slide to review the steps in the process. Remember, when we're solving equations, our goal is to find the value for the variable that makes the equation a true statement. And when we're looking at two-step equations specifically, we want to remove the constant terms using addition and subtraction, and then next we're going to want to remove the coefficient using multiplication or division. The last thing we want to really remember and focus on is that when we are solving equations, our main goal is to keep the equation balanced. And what we're going to do to one side of the equation, we are also going to do to the other side of the equation. So let's look at a few practice problems together. 3x plus 10 equals 22. So we're going to look at the problem. We see our x is our variable. We see that we have a coefficient of 3, and our constant on the left side of the equation is represented by 10. We want to gather all our like terms. So I'm going to undo addition by using the inverse operation and subtract 10 on both sides. I'm going to end up with 3x on the left is equal to 12. Now, I want to remove my coefficient by using inverse operations, and I can see that 3 times x is equal to 12, so I'm going to do inverse operations and divide both sides by 3, so I'll have that x is equal to 4. I can always check my equation by taking my solution, or check my solution, I should say, and plugging it back into my equation. So I'll have 3 times 4 plus 10 to see if that is equal to 22. So I'm going to have 12 plus 10 equals 22, and 22 is equal to 22. We know that's a true statement, so we know that we solved that equation correctly. Now go ahead and pause the video and try this next one on your own. So following along here, we're going to do something very similar to what we did on the left. We're going to use our inverse operations to move the constant and gather all our like terms together. We have 6x on the left, we're going to have 18 on the right. Now we have a new equation that looks just like the equations we solved in the previous videos, and so we have 6x equals 18. The inverse operation of multiplication is division, so we're going to divide both sides by 6. We're going to say that x is equal to 3. I can use substitution to check my solution by plugging my value of x back into the original equation. I'll get 6 times 3, which is 18, plus 9 is equal to 27. I'll have 27 is equal to 27, which is correct. And that keeps everything balanced and it makes a true statement, so I know that I solved that correctly. Now in these questions, we're going to see where integer operations come into play using um, when we're multiplying and dividing by negative numbers, and then when we're adding and subtracting negative numbers as well. So all of the processes stay the same. We're just going to have to be real careful about our values. So I'm going to do the inverse of subtracting 3. 
I'm going to add 3 to both sides. I'll have a negative 5r is equal to 15. Again, I'm going to use the inverse of multiplication to divide by negative 5. And that's really, you got to be really careful to not lose that negative sign along the way. Now I'll have that r is equal to negative, or 15 divided by a negative 5, I know is going to be a negative 3. Go ahead and pause the video and try the next one on your own. Okay, so again, the process is very much the same, but I'm going to be really careful with my integer operations. So I'm going to add 17 to both sides because I'm collecting like terms. I'm left with 7m on the left side equals, and some of you may have may be able to do this really quickly in your head, and some of you may need a little bit more practice. So I'm going to quickly sketch out a number line, a vertical number line, how I would do this. So I'd sketch out my vertical number line. I'm going to add 0 to my line, and I'm at negative 24. Put that down here. I want to move up 17. I want to go 17 in the positive direction. And if I count that out, that means I will be at negative 7. So I know that negative 24 plus 17 is going to be negative 7. I'm going to divide by 7 on both sides. And I'll get that m is equal to negative 1. Because these are integer operations, it's a little bit tricky. I'm going to try two more problems just to make sure that we have it. Okay, so in this problem, the x and our variable is actually on the right side of the equation, but that doesn't really matter because an equation is balanced and they're equal. We're just going to have to focus on the right side of the equation first. So we have 15 equals negative 85 minus 25x. So I still want to gather all my like terms and my constants together, but I'm going to be moving the 85 by using addition, opposite of a negative, and I'm going to have... 100 over here on the left is equal to, you have to be really careful here not to lose that negative sign, a negative 25. Then I'm again going to use inverse operations to divide by negative 25. And I will get that negative 4 equals x. And I like to rewrite the, the variable on the left. Because when we get to inequalities, that's really helpful. It doesn't change the solution but I just find it a little bit easier to remember as we go on. Then let's go ahead and pause this number, this video so that you can try the next one yourself. Okay, so this is very similar. We have a 35 minus 2x equals 15. We're going to remove our constants, and even though there's not a positive sign or a plus sign in front of this, we know that that's a positive number because it doesn't, oops, doesn't, indicate a negative sign. I'm going to subtract using inverse operations. I'm going to be very careful with the subtraction sign, making sure that I keep it with the negative 2x. Then I'm going to do my math, and I know that this is negative 20. I'm going to divide by negative 2 on both sides. I have the x is equal to, and be really careful with these operations right here, we're going to, with x is equal to a positive 10. Let's look at how this applies to word problems. It says that Mark is 8 inches shorter than 2 times the height of his little brother, Brian. If Mark is 52 inches tall, how tall is Brian? Okay, so I like to look at it and see what is the question asking. It wants to know how tall is Brian. So I'm going to say that b is equal to Brian's height. And it tells me in the problem that we're talking about inches. Okay. Then we know that there's the, someone, Mark, Mark, his brother, is involved. Okay. But we don't know Brian's height. It tells us that Mark is, and I kind of like to pay attention to the word is. So it says that Mark is equals 8 inches shorter than 2 times the height of his brother, Brian. So I know we're talking about 8 inches shorter. So to me, that reminds me that we're talking about subtracting 8, then 2 times the height of Brian. So if I know Brian's height is b, I can write that as 2b 
minus 8 to represent that it's 8 inches shorter. So that's what I know so far. And then it says if Mark is 52 inches tall. So this tells me right here that I can, if Mark is 52 inches tall, I can just bring that right here and represent it with the equation 52 equals 2b minus 8. And I'm going to actually rewrite it over here so I have more room to solve. I'm going to gather my constants together, my like terms. I have that 60 is equal to 2b. I'm going to divide by 2. And I'll have that 30 is equal to Brian. So we know that Brian is 30 inches tall. Awesome. There's one more word problem that I would like you to solve on your own by pausing the video. Okay, it says Stephanie is registering her son for swim lessons. There's a one-time $45 registration fee plus a $20 fee per lesson. Stephanie paid a total of $225. For how many lessons did Stephanie register? Okay, so let's kind of think about this in a real-life situation. It, the question wants to know for how many lessons did she register? So I'm going to use my variable x to represent the number of lessons. Okay. I know that there's a one-time fee. And any time it says that there's a one-time fee, I that kind of gives me a clue to think that it's representing a constant because it's only happening one time. Then it tells me that there is a fee of $20 per lesson. So these are, um, this is going to represent swimming, the beach, ocean, okay? And so every time Stephanie goes to swim lessons, it's going to cost $20, okay? So again, we know that that's a fee that is reoccurring every time she goes. So I can write down that there's a $20 fee, and we know how many time, or how much that's going to be depending on how many lessons she goes to. So that's where I'm going to write my variable. Plus there's this one time fee that I know represents my constant. And we also know that the total is $225. So we can now solve our equation by gathering our constants or our like terms. 20x is equal to 180, I'm going to divide by 20 on both sides, and I can see that x is equal to 9, so that represents 9 swim lessons. Okay, well, great job. You all solved two step equations with integers. Feel free to go back and rewatch any of the questions in the video. And if you need some more practice, there's, you're going to see five additional questions come up that you can try on your own. Great job.